Okay guys, so today we're going to talk about what really happened 12,800 years ago at the end of the last ice age when the world got slung into darkness for hundreds of years and the ecosystem got completely destroyed. Yes, and this period is what scientists call the Younger Dryas period and it lasted between 12,800 12, years ago to 11,600 years ago. And today we're going to go deeper into what caused this event and if it could possibly happen again anytime soon. So this is what the world looked like during the last glacial maximum, LGM which was at its peak around 20,000 years ago. As you can see, all of North America and Europe and also big parts of Asia was completely covered in ice. Since the ice comes from water and laid on top of land, you can guess that the sea level was a lot lower than today. Actually 120 meters lower than normal standards today. And that means that a substantial amount of land that was exposed is now underwater. Here is another image that shows how much land was actually eaten by the sea when the ice melted. There were no British islands since all of the water in between was contributing to building up the ice sheets and therefore exposing all the land. If you add up all the land mass that disappeared when the ice melted, it would cover more mass than all of Europe and all of China together. So there is still a lot of debate between different groups of scientists on what caused the event, but it has become clear that since the event happened so rapidly that it melted almost all the ice on top of North America, Europe and Asia within less than a decade that is indicating that the event has to have been caused by something that came outside of Earth an extraterrestrial object of some sort Yeah, so uh, two of the most plausible theories that have been put forward are the event was caused by either a massive solar outburst or an asteroid impact However though, since November last year, 2018 the evidence is pointing towards that it was an asteroid impact since NASA accidentally found a crater hidden under the Hiawati Glacier in Greenland. Research is still undergoing on this massive discovery, but it certainly seems that something hit the Earth approximately 13,000 years ago, at the same time as almost the entire North American and European ice melted incredibly fast. So this crater has been able to be identified through ice penetrating radar, and it shows that it's some 19 mile or 31 kilometers wide crater. So they've been able to figure out from this data that it must have been weighing around 11 to 12 billion tons of pure iron and it was traveling approximately 12 miles per second which is equivalent to some more than 43 miles per hour when it slammed into earth some 12 or 13,000 years ago. This asteroid had a mind-blowing force of 700 megatons. Just to put that in perspective, the biggest and most powerful bomb ever dropped and tested on this earth was the Tsar Bomba, that during the Cold War was tested by the Russians. The Tsar Bomba had a power of 50 megatons and caused huge, huge damage. Everyone within 100 kilometers from ground zero would have received third degree burns and probably would die. It's almost impossible to comprehend the insane damage that this event caused. I mean, just try to imagine this 12 billion ton iron asteroid hitting the ice shelf and vaporizing thousands of square kilometers of ice within an instant. I mean the earth would have had massive tsunamis for days to come and the vaporized water and dust from the impact would have caused a nuclear winter which means that the sun can't shine through and the earth would go into entire darkness for years. So to further prove the damage made by this event you can take a look at the massive extinction that took place all over the world at this time. Yeah, so the continent that took most damage was North America. North America lost 80% of all the mammals, the big mammals, in a few decades. Uh, Europe lost 60% of all the mammals and so on. The place that survived the best was Africa. Even though Africa lost some big mammals, many survived. That's why Africa is the coolest place on earth. You can find the coolest animals, the giraffes, the rhinos, the elephants, the lions and so on. No other place can you find so many mammals of so many different species at the same place. That's true. And what, what we mean by mammals is big mammals. And that is mammals weighing around over 50 kilos. So we humans would count as big mammals. And one of the reasons why Africa survived so, so good from this cataclysm was one, because it's very, very far away from Greenland where the impact hit. And also because the continent is very high above sea level. So uh, they wouldn't be as affected by tsunamis and water coming in in huge amounts of the continent uh, in the same way as North America did. What's really crazy actually is that the current theory uh, is that 
all these extinct mammals did not come from uh, a global cataclysm. The, the current theory is called the Clovis First Theory and it is based on that. When the first Indians moved from Siberia uh, over the landmass over to North America, which is in a hundred years, they killed all these big mammals they killed. Mammoths, saber-toothed tigers, short-faced bears, all these mammals. I mean, it is crazy. I mean, don't you think? Yeah, it's actually crazy. We can show you some pictures and then because we're, we're not going to make you believe in something. We're just going to show you some pictures and then you can speculate around it how you... How you feel if you really believe that humans kill these mammals. Or All of these animals we're about to show you went extinct at the end of the last ice age. As we said only about 11 to 12,000 years ago. And the current theory that is still taught in public schools around the world is that these huge animals were killed by a few Indian groups in less than a thousand years. It's not very plausible when you consider their size. Yeah, so one of them, the one on the screen right now, is Milodon, or better known as the Cybertooth Tiger, weighed about 250 kilograms, a pure beast. Yeah, and the next one, as you can see, is the short-faced bear. And this bear was not a normal bear. I mean, if you look at the size of it, it's almost double the size of a grizzly bear. It weighed around 1,000 or more uh, kilos, 900 to 1,100 kilos, and it was a beast as well. It existed in North America, Europe, and other places. Yeah, the Irish elk uh, weighed about 700 kilograms, total beast, it was double the size of the ordinary elk that we see around these days. Yeah. Animal, ferocious. Yeah, ferocious, I mean really huge. And the next one as you can see is a cave lion. And the cave lion existed in North America and Europe as well. And uh, yeah, you can hear it on the name, it lived in caves actually. And, and it was 25% bigger than the current African lion that exists today. It weighed around 320 kilograms. And the last one, uh, Megatherium, also known as the giant sloth. <laughs> this guy is absolutely huge. I mean, I can't even believe when I look at it. It got huge claws, weighed around four tons, existed mostly in South America. Uh, they even climbed trees. I mean, a four ton beast climbing trees, can you even believe that? I mean, they outmatched elephants any day. Amazing. Okay, so now if all these big mammals died out in a, such a quick short period of time uh, the cataclysm must have had uh, a uh, huge effect on the people living uh, in the world back then uh, especially uh, because a lot of people uh, live in the coastal areas right now yeah so they probably did 12,000 years ago as well, as well because the coastal areas are very flourishable it's easy to build a civilization there and since most people are living that way today they probably did 12,000 years ago as well and um, all the people living on the coast at that time would have been completely wiped out of record just like that because when the ice melted and, uh, and the water level rose with 120 meters in a very short uh, amount of time I mean they would experience mega tsunamis just taking over everything just pouring right into the country and dragging everything with them out into the ocean again so if they had any civilization it would completely, completely be gone if they had any technology that would also be completely gone so, I mean, I think that's also where you see a huge gap uh, if you consider prehistory and uh, the so-called beginning of civilization, like Mesopotamia and Sumer. There's a huge gap in between, and I think this cataclysm has a lot to do with it. But we'll save that content for coming videos. Yeah, drop a like, leave a comment. That's yeah. about it. Yeah, that's about Peace it. Peace, guys. Chicken a cone, in a cocky line. Mama.